So today we're going to talk about how to build training shafts for a beginner dog and how to build a cart. So we'll start with the training shafts. This training shaft setup for a beginner dog cost me no more than $7. So I went to Lowe's today, picked up all the equipment. It consists of PVC pipe, so this is one inch PVC pipe. I got a 10 foot piece, it was like $1.12. And it also consists of these 90 degree elbows. So there's two of those and they're 41 cents each. And then I picked up eyelets. Now these are a little long. You can find shorter ones, but they didn't have any of the shorter ones in stock. So I picked up three of these. And this is one of the simplest training shafts that you could make. Now I love the PVC because it is really, really light. You could start a young dog on this because there's almost no weight on it at all. It's very flexible, so I don't have these glued in or anything, so you can see how flexible that is. So if the dog does tend to, uh, you know, took off or didn't have a good experience, it's not a big deal because the PVC may break or just fall off, and it's very inexpensive, so you don't have to worry about that, about breaking anything expensive. And it's also very adjustable. So I'm going to show you what that means. So what I did was I took this 10-foot piece of pipe, these are a little bit longer than four foot on each side. So that's about the length that I need for the size of dogs I have. I have greater Swiss mountain dogs. They're anywhere from 90 to 130 pounds ish. And then I have this piece here, the one that joins them together. And this one I made 18 inches, but if you have a larger dog, make it a little larger. If you have a smaller dog, make it a little smaller. It is about two, two and a half inches wider than my dog's width when measured at her hocks. When I have my dog stacked, so that's how I determine this measurement. Or you can get a spreader bar you use with your dog and just make it a little longer than your spreader bar. Let's talk about attaching these eyelets. This is pretty easy and straightforward. So what I did was I drilled holes. I used the drill press. You could use a regular drill, but I just drilled some holes here. So if I wanted to adjust it for a dog that's a little shorter, I need to do some adjustments. I can easily take this eyelet off, move it back and forth as needed. So I did that on both sides. And this is very straightforward as well. This is just an eyelet right down the center. Now there's a couple of variations that you can do with this. So I'll show you with my spreader bar. So I made it like this. So I can easily hook up my spreader bar. Just like that, very simple. If you want to attach the traces, you could put the eyelet here and here. That is fine as well. I mean, these are training shafts. They're cheap. They're very easy to use. They're very lightweight. They're great. I absolutely love them. Now, the next thing that we're going to talk about is this training cart. I've had this training cart for, oh, upwards of 10 years. And um, I made this at home. It went through many models, and this is the latest and easiest model I have. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. So with the cart, a couple of things that you need to measure with your dog is you know the length of the shafts, the width of the shafts, and the height of the shafts. When the dog is in cart, this shaft here should be right at the point of shoulder and stick out over the shoulder just a tiny little bit. It should be perfectly straight. When it is perfectly straight and this the bottom of the cart here should be perfectly level. When that is perfectly level your cart is perfectly balanced. So there's a couple of things to think about when creating the size of your shafts. And then the other thing to think about is the point of which it connects to the harness. So this point of connection should be somewhere higher than the dog's hock. So most of these hocks are about here, but no taller than the point of the shoulder of the dog. So somewhere in between there. So there are a couple of things that you need to think about when building your cart. Now we'll talk about each piece of my cart. And first, let's start with the axle. Now, these 
carts you can make out of anything. Now this piece is a milk crate cart that I've just spray painted. You can use a milk crate, you can use a wooden platform, or I have a dog that I made a cart for that looked like a cabinet drawer. So the next thing I'll show you is the axle. This is fairly easy. So just to put the axle on, I got eyelets and a metal bracket. If you're using wood, you wouldn't need a metal bracket. You could just drill a hole directly through the wood. But because there are holes here in this milk crate, I have a metal bracket. Um, there are some metal brackets available at Lowe's and Home Depot. This particular one is no longer available at Home Depot, but you can get a welder to fabricate it for you. And these wheels are essentially lawnmower wheels. Now, this is a training cart. This is not a cart that I would use in um, a parade or to do a lot of heavy, heavy pulling, but it's a cart, a little small utility cart I can use for small things and particularly for draft test. So this is a lawnmower wheel. And what I do is I go to Lowe's, I pick up this lawnmower wheel and I walk it over to hardware and I go and I pick up axles and I find the axle that fits. I think this one had a blue tip on it, so they are color coded, but um, the colors might have changed since I've built this cart, but that's essentially how I select my axle. I just take the wheel over from the lawn mowing department from outdoors and I take it to hardware and I find my axle. Now this is the old way that I used to um, keep the wheel on. I drilled a hole through the axle and I stuck in a hairpin. Now this can pop off quite easily so you can disassemble the whole thing. Other ways that I've done it is I've welded an eyelet onto here so there's some threaded screws here and you can do a wing nut. So stick your wheel on, you can put a washer and use a wing nut. So that's the axle. Same thing on both sides, very easy to pop off. I love this cart because you can take everything off with very few tools, because I used wing nuts almost everywhere. So the next thing we'll talk about Are the shafts. How did I connect the shafts? Well, I got these shaft collars from Tractor and Supply. Well, they're three or four dollars each. And what you can do is you can get this wrench, this little Allen wrench, you can loosen or you can tighten. That makes it easy to adjust the length of the shaft. So if you have an extra long dog, you need it to have more length here, you can pull it out. So if you have a super short dog, you can push this back. But this is really, really useful so that you can adjust the cart to whatever dog you have. You can also use it to rotate this in and out. So rotate it out for a taller dog, make it straight up, rotate it in for a shorter, more narrow dog. So this is a really great way to do it. And I did have this welded onto a melder bracket. And then I used the same metal bracket and wing nut that you see here to attach it. It's really, really quite simple. And I used the same thing for the point of attachment. So it's basically an eyelet, a metal bracket, and a wing nut, just like that. And that makes it easier to adjust if I show up at a draft test and another person's cart's broken or something happens, I can say, hey, use my cart. You can adjust almost everything on here in just a matter of minutes. And you can disassemble the whole thing and fly with it. If you have a really small car, you can disassemble and put it in your car for the nationals. So we'll just go one more time over the cart. So here's the chair tip that I have for the front just to make sure that this doesn't scrape against my dog. If the chair tip is a little loose, you can wrap some tape around it to make it thicker and then pop the chair tip back on. The shaft collar serves at the brake all the way down. So shaft collar again here that's welded onto these brackets. The wheels and the axle. And I'll give you another look at how axles connected here. So really quite simple. Oh, look at that. Still have the tag on after a, a, over a decade of using this cart. So there you have it. 
If you want to use wood, that's fine. You don't have to worry about these metal brackets. Just drill directly into the wood. Very easy to build cart. Today I'm going to talk about making training shafts for novice draft dogs, dogs that are just getting started. So as you can see, I have my cart over here. And then these are some training shafts that I made out of PVC pipes. You can also use conduit, but PVC pipe is really inexpensive. If the dog happens to not be entirely sure of being in between the shafts, you know, the PVC pipe is just real light. They'll break if the dog runs and things like that. So um, I picked up the materials to make these training shafts at Lowe's for about $7. And let's go ahead and look at it. So the training shafts consist of two long pieces, and these are right about four foot long each. So these two long pieces, and then one piece here, the spreader bar that keeps them uh, together. And this one is about 18 inches. It really depends on your size of dog. I have greater Swiss mountain dogs, so about 18 inches works for most greater Swiss mountain dogs. In addition to that, I got three eyelets. Um, when I went to go pick these up at Lowe's, they didn't have any shorter ones, but ideally you could have shorter ones, longer ones. It really doesn't matter. This is just where you're going to hook the harness onto. And then I have two here to serve as the brakes. Now once I have these shafts cut, and this is just one long piece, uh, a 10 foot piece of one inch PVC pipe, and I cut it into the four foot pieces and the 18 inch pieces, I connected them with this elbow, and these were 41 cents each, or you can get a bag for something like 252 for 10. So I just connected them together, and in the center I drilled a hole, and I put the eyelet in there. So again, you want this to be centered. If you do have two traces and no spreader bar, then you can put an eyelet here and an eyelet here so that the traces can connect. I'll go ahead and show you what that's like. So this is my dog's spreader bar. This is how it should hook up to the training shafts. However, if you want training purposes, you can hook it here too by putting an eyelet here or here. So either way works fine. So let's talk about these long pieces. So in terms of the brakes, what I've done is I've actually drilled several holes. So depending on the length I need to put the brakes in, I can select which hole I need. So it was very easy to, you can use a drill. I had a drill press to do this with and I did it on both sides. So these are just a couple of inches apart from each other. And then I put the eyelets in. So these are gonna serve as the brake. So again, these are the training shafts. You can see when compared to a cart, how it is similar. So you can start a dog fairly young because these are so light, incredibly light, easy to use. And if you even want to, if you want to start the dog even more elementary than that, you can just walk around with this shaft next to the dog's side as you're taking a walk and get them used to things rubbing against their side. So that's how you can make one. Very simple for about $7. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to build a cart and this is my cart it is um probably 11 or 12 years old now um i've had it for a really long time everything was handmade um most of the materials were actually purchased at lowe's so this has been a great little cart and this cart for me has held up to about 130 pounds in the basket without a problem so I'm going to go through each part of this cart and you can use these designs and ideas to build one for yourself. So the basic cart is basically, it's milk crate. It's essentially a milk crate that I have just spray painted. And this is a six gallon milk crate. Four gallons are available. You can purchase them or find them on Craigslist or eBay and things like that. You can also build a box out of wood or just have a wooden platform so I've done both so I had another dog that had a wooden box that looked like a little cabinet drawer you can actually get one and turn that into a uh, cart as well if you like these are the wheels that I like to use 
I get these from the lawnmower section of Lowe's. And what I've done is I've gotten the axle also at Lowe's and I'll just <laughs> take the wheel from the lawn mowing section, walk to hardware and just try different axles and find the one that works. And on this, you can tell what I've done is I've drilled a hole through the axle and I've put a hairpin in it. So this pops off quite easily if I have both hands. And then you can remove the wheel if you want to travel. So that's one great perk about making it this way so that you can easily travel with a cart, take it apart, put it back together if your space in your car is limited or if you're flying with it. Now with the axle, what I've actually done to connect it to the cart is I used eyelets at the bottom. So there's several eyelets here and this was a mending plate that I purchased at Lowe's as well. I don't think they carry these anymore. I've looked and I've looked um, and I don't find them at Home Depot either, but you can actually just get a block of wood and drill the holes in yourself. Um, if you're using a wooden platform, you wouldn't need this actual bracket, but you do for this particular milk crate because there's holes in here and the eyelet would just fall right through unless you find a washer large enough. So that's how I've attached my axle. Now I'm going to prop the cart up and you can actually see what it looks like on the underside. So this is the bottom of the milk crate and you can see you there see the eyelet keep the axle attached to the cart and these are just little wing nuts and that's all it is so this is very easy to take off completely disassemble if you want to travel with this it's a very very easy way to do it now now going back to the axle there was another way that I did it I don't have any of these types, but what I did was I had one of those eyelets or screw actually welded on here. So instead of using a hairpin, you put the wheel on and then you can just take a wing nut and wing nut the wheel on there. So that's another way that you can do it. So there's several ways. Hopefully these are giving you some good ideas. And that's also very similar to the way that I've done the um, attachment for the harness or the spreader bar. So, I just had a plate here. If you're using wood, again, you can just drill directly into the wood if you're using wood. And on the other side, you have an eyelet. So very easy, again, easy to take apart. Now, let's talk about these shafts here. These shafts are electrical conduit. And what I've done is I've got a pipe bender. I'm not professional pipe bender by any means. It does take some practice. Um, it took a long time to practice on how to bend these correctly. And what I like about this is that on this particular one, you can see here I have it slightly in, so you can actually adjust the height and the width depending on your width and the height of the dog. Now you might be wondering, how did I get these attached here? So this round part here, is actually a shaft collar. Now I picked these up at Tractor and Supply and right here you can use an axle wrench or an allen wrench and actually just loosen or tighten so you can easily take that off. So I had the shaft collar welded onto a metal plate so that's how I did that. So it's pretty simple. Now again looking at the shafts I use the same collars here to serve as my brake. So these are adjustable, very easy to adjust. You just put your axle rinse in there. You can tighten it, loosen it, bring it back, bring it forward. And then this is what I use on the tip. These are just chair tips. They come in black and they come in white. If they are a little bit too loose, you can see in there what I've done is I got an electrical tape, wrapped it around, and then pop the chair tip right back on. Now, a couple of things you want to remember whenever you build a cart, you want to make sure that it's level. So, ways that you can change whether or not a cart is level in relation to the dog is you can actually change the height of the axle. You cannot for this particular one, but I've seen other carts where they'll actually have a bracket that goes up or down so that you can change the height of the wheels where the axle sits. So maybe a little higher, a little lower. They'll have a wooden piece that comes down here. So, and a couple of holes so you can select where the axle goes. You know, make it a little shorter or make it a little taller, whichever one you need. The 
other thing that you need to think about when building this cart is how long do the shafts need to be. So another great thing about using this method of the shaft collars is that you can push the shaft back to shorten them or you can pull them forward to make them longer. So this one is completely adjustable for the width, the height, and the length. So using this method makes it very easy to adjust this particular cart to any dog. And as you can see, what I've done for my dogs, you know, which it depends on whichever one is using them. So Vesta, who's using this cart now, I have it adjusted to her and I've marked it with a black Sharpie so I know where this needs to be set for her. So those are the other things that are adjustable and um, I'm going back to the attachment to um, where the spreader bar hooks onto the cart. And if you want to do the traces directly to the cart, of course you can have two. But this should be somewhere taller than the hock of the dog, but no higher than the point of the shoulder of the front of the dog. So on her, Vesta's hock is probably about right here. So that's the right length so you can move it up or down depending on how tall or short the dog is. So we'll go over the cart one more time. So a chair tip, shaft collar for the brake, electrical conduit, the wheel, the attachment, so this is the shaft collar, welded onto a metal bracket. They're held together with wing nuts. So again, wing nuts, eyelet, and then same thing on the other side. And then again at the bottom. So the axle is running all the way across through these eyelets. And the eyelets are attached with this metal bar. So there are actually two metal bars here and these wing nuts. Very simple cart, easy to assemble and disassemble, very light, it's a great training cart.